Bro, that school bus is flying. That looks like things that are uncontrollable are off limits. And then I'll just lose interest. Yo, you got that drip on, son? Morning, you stinky bratwurst. Uh, I'm currently on a race against the Amazon Prime delivery guy. Uh, so I have a packer driving this morning, the MetaQuest 3. But I also need to get back to give him a one-time passcode to drop the package off. Right, they're two stops away. I just got to the gym, got the notification, and so I'm rushing back. And hopefully I get there in time so they don't wake up the dogs, which would then wake up my wife, which would then, not then, but would also wake up Rugi. Right, it's literally two stops away. It's on my road to go down to the house. I'm racing against time, but I've got some old bogey in front of me that's slow as hell so we'll see if we'll make this i think we're going to that was a good stop i like that what i i think roundabouts i never realized how good roundabouts are in england until i came over here in the states and realized that stop signs are everywhere i kind of i, I hate stop signs actually but roundabouts are so flipping good if people know how to use them because this isn't a bash on Americans roundabouts are so new here that most people aren't really sure what they're doing like once you understand how a roundabout works they work so well in England because people understand them just because they've been around for so long it makes the traffic flow so smoothly All right. we're chasing a school bus now Come on. Hopefully it's not the magic school bus. Bro, that school bus is flying. Okay, let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Almost went on the curb. Just look out for a small child that we can hit. I mean, not hit. Oh, I think I see the driver. Is that you stopped there? That might be. Uh, yeah, because when they do deliveries this time in the morning, it's just a random. Uh... Okay. All right, give me a second. Let me see if I can see where he is. I kid you not, he's walking away from the house, about to get back in his car. And I asked him, I said, oh, this is a weird thing. Do you, have you had this happen before? He goes, no, first time I've, I've seen this. I hate the, I hate the idea. Like to me, the first thing I did was apologize there because I hate the idea that I was slowing down his day of being a bottleneck in him and his work. That I was the one that was the bottleneck. I don't think he was waiting that, that that long based on the tracking data I have. You know, on the app, you can see where the driver is. So I think he just got there, but yeah. Hopefully the dogs weren't barking. I didn't hear them barking, which is nice. All right, now we go get the gym session in. Go back to the gym. <laughs> All right, young thug. So I normally moisturize every after every time I shower. But my wife went to Whole Foods the other day and got a lot of freebies for things. So this one, excuse me. <coughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> no. Yes. Don't look at me, don't look at me. That is vile, isn't it? What a start to the day. I have to change that when I get home. All right. I should cut that out. Um, yeah, let, let's try this. And then we've got some refreshing facial mist. Don't know what to make of that. This is skin decadence, by the way, so just keep that in mind. 
And if you're wondering what that means, I think that's a fair question. There we go. That looks like, got it. It's thick. It's a thick boy. Oh, oh gosh. Vanilla bean. I feel like I'm getting, it's getting stuck to my face. <sighs> Jinkies, this is thick. It's probably a packet for the whole body and I just whacked the whole thing on my face. I guess with how thick this is, the facial mist isn't really gonna work, is it? I'll save that for tomorrow. Oh. I'm just seeing if it's like semi rubbed in. It feels awful. Rub it into my belly. Uh, I probably, the, I should take a pinch of salt with that one, okay, because I use like a quite moisturizer normally, so I'm probably not a good person to be doing a good comparison. So maybe you'd like it. I didn't, but maybe you would. All right, um, I saw this video this morning. You may have seen it on TikTok. It's going fairly viral at the moment. It's some black girl and a white dude. The white dude I've seen before. The black girl I've never seen before. They're kind of talk. I'll just show you it. You know what? Your mouth kind of reminds me of like a person from Whoville. That's because fine. you like lip is not there. Well, I can't like, help that. If I had one piece of advice that I think is so useful for life, it's that... If you're gonna make fun of someone, like trying to be like nice or funny or like an actual joke, things that are uncontrollable are off limits. So things like uh, a receding hairline, um, jinkies, can't grow a beard properly, or short. Any of those things, you can't you can't control those unless you know head off to Turkey for a hair transplant. But something like the trousers choice of someone yeah well they not it depends on the person and whether they can take the joke or not but that is something they can change ideally don't make that joke when they're already out because then they can't change it it's like a temporary uncontrollable thing <laughs> just if you're going to make a joke think about that Oliver, you are so wise. How do you get so wise? I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm just because I'm oldish. All right, let me change the settings so that, never mind, I just, I won't bother explaining. I have this problem with my beard. So from here, it grows out, like around this way, and then this side just grows out this way. I don't know if I should be cutting it Oh, key in the ignition. I don't know if I should be cutting it a certain way or if I need to get some training wheels for it. Please don't reverse backwards, you've been waiting for ages. Okay. By the way, I was pulling, what is it with finding things in the road? But I was in the turning lane to pull into the gym and there's a big box in the road, like blocking the road. So I stopped, put my hazards on, picked it up. And I was like, if I put it back in the medium, it's just gonna medium, it's just gonna blow back into the road. So I started to put it in my car, which is then when I realized that actually it was box from some kind of meat and there's blood on the bottom of it. So I have a bloody box in the back of my car. Like what are the chances? You imagine this scenario. If I've got that box with blood on it in my car, I get pulled over for something and they check the back of my car to find that box and it's linked to a murder and we have this video of me talking about this. Can you imagine? 
and why I would say imagine so dramatically. So the guy who was going to do the Zapier, the Zapier automations for the social media posts, he quoted 250. I sent him a message last night. I was asking if he could do it for 200. Like, I don't understand the complexities of it. So let's see if he can do that. And if he can, get that set up immediately. And I think part of my, part of what I'm gonna do today is cut up all the other clips so that they're ready for me just to upload for the um, editing team to work on them. And then I'm, I might try give the MetaQuest three a go since that arrived this morning. That was the package, by the way. And then maybe the needle mat. Like the, oh. MetaQuest three and see if we can find a kaleidoscope, something to do with a kaleidoscope. Like, do I watch YouTube? Oh, Oliver. I was just going to use my phone in another VR headset I have. It's not VR, it just allows you to put your phone in it so that that's all you see. Hmm. I'm undecided. Let's have a bit of brekkie first, and then I'll think about it. So you'll probably know the answer in about 30 seconds. Yep. Here's the box, by the way. CJ's. I don't know why there would be blood on it. It's just boxes. Grim. What you're about to hear is one of the problems that I run into nearly always every time uh, when I do series on TikTok is that they'll do really well. I have this plan for all these videos and then I'll just lose interest. I'll lose steam in what I'm doing. Like I don't really have that much interest in doing the next needle map video, but like I'm thinking through the different options, like one of yeah, one of the options, I was just checking my mic was on. One of the options was the kaleidoscope, which we thought about doing with the MetaQuest. And I was like, I'm just, I don't know how interested I am in doing that. And then the numbing cream. Like I'm a little bit more interested in doing that. And I think that would get really good views if I can articulate, if I can get across well enough that there's a the, the pain factor and the release of the endorphins, I think it's endorphins, that that is what gets helps get you to this hallucinogenic stage, the meditation stage. I don't use those words interchangeably, by the way. It's like when you get to that meditative stage, you also get to see hallucinations. So those aren't synonyms for the same thing. Um, yeah, I'm feeling like that should be the, the finale to this at the moment. But also, this was one of the other things that was in that pack of free stuff that my wife got. So I'm going to give it a go. Some vegan protein. All right. Let's get this up in the Jinkies mug. Oh, I didn't even open it properly. Here we go. Get in the Jinkies mixer. All right, I'm, I'm imagining the brand name is Plant Complete. So let's give you a go. Hopefully you're better than whatever that facial moisturizer I tried was. Good color to it. Look at that. Ooh, 
that's a very nice color. Just water in here, no milk. <sighs> it reminds me of this protein my dad used to have like 10 years ago. How do I explain it? I mean, it's all right. I mean, there's, if you're looking for a vegan protein powder, maybe you'd like that. I'll stick to the one I use. Thank you very much. Um, I made a slight change to the video this morning. I edited it this morning, but over the weekend, since we are two videos behind, which I really want to catch up on and just do like, Whatever I filmed yesterday is going up today, which I should do. I'll just edit too. Um, yeah, so I mentioned that I would add a snippet of what's to come at the beginning of the video. So there's no like vocal, this is what, this is what you should expect, but I've just added in, I've taken clips and I've put in, you know, like 10 seconds of stuff at the beginning. I think it's 15 seconds actually, oh gosh, oh no. Yeah, well, 14 seconds. Um, so I think we'll see how that does. Just see if, see if that helps at all. I feel like I, I can feel myself thinking more about the, uh, from the creative perspective of what can I do to help make the video do better? Which goes into that retention line of thinking. I'm not kind of, I want to stay away from that. But there's also a few things that I should be doing. Like I, I feel like I would, it would be far more useful to someone watching, for you watching, to have an idea of what's to come in the video. And I, I think as a, if, I, if I, we think about two different types of viewers, right? We have the, the brand new viewer who's never seen your stuff before, never heard of you. If they click on your video and you're just in the car talking and the thumbnail is something completely different, they're gonna click off, there's no doubt. So you have to find a way to make the video appealing to those people. Like, because you've already captured their attention with either the title and or the thumbnail. And so then you have to retain that attention at least for them to you know, start watching the video a little bit. But then of course you have your, I don't yet, <laughs> but you have the viewers that will watch whatever just because they're interested in you know, whatever, let's say in my case, Oliver is doing. And in those cases, it's not as vital to have that snippet at the beginning. Anyway, we'll try it for a while, see if it helps at all. Go from there. Oh, I've just realized a mistake. The thumbnail in this case is me, excuse me, with the disco ball and the needle mat. But in that snippet at the beginning, I don't have anything about the needle mat, which I should do, shouldn't I? I definitely should. Replace. Okay. Now, I want to give the Quest 3 a go later, but as far as I'm concerned, that's a nice to have thing for today. If we're talking about the scale of priority. Oh, I'm just, I'm not a fan of that vegan protein. Also, let's be very clear here. Vegan is not how I would normally say it. That's just how an ex-prime minister in England said it. Boris Johnson, what a muggo. Not, let's not get into the politics of it, just him. Oh, speaking of weird stuff, I was going through my camera roll and I forgot that I had, what is it with, these are some nice sweatpants, right? They look very tight when I put my leg up here, but they're not as when I put them down here. They're fleecy lined, all right? They're, they're Nike, so they're not a bad brand. Why are my feet covered? This is like the, f I've washed them once or twice already. 
Why are my feet covered in fleece, looking like this? Although, you know, that's super hot. Why do they look like that? I don't know. Okay. So we've copied all the stuff over from the SD cards. And now, my darling, it is time to begin on whatever it is we're about to do. Format. I'm just going to finish this. Like today, I'll finish it, but it's like dusty. Hi, Lila. What you doing? Hi, you good girl. Oh, Duda, you're beautiful too. Um, get rid of everything on here. You right, Lila? Oh, you want to see Mohawk Dog? Lila, oh my goodness, you want to see that Mohawk? Oh, Lila, you wait there, stay, stay. Look at that Mohawk, Lila, that thing is sick. Woo! Oh, yeah. What do you think, Lila? You think you look good? You think you look fire? Yo, you got that drip on, son? Good you. <laughs> That's such a funny mohawk. <laughs> Lila, good girl. Good girl. Oh, get them butt scratches. Get them butt scratches. Good girl. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. I... Hello, Lila. Uh, current, current situation here. Hi, Lila. Oh, dude, Lila, Lila, get away from me. Dude, what's wrong? Lila, no, no. Who's that, Lila? Lila, who's that? Over here. Hi, Dita. Okay, that's enough of that. Hi, dude, guys. You want some more pets as well? Good girl. <laughs> what are you doing, Lila? Come here, Lila. Up here, Lila. Stupid ass. <laughs> oh, Lila, get some butt tickles. Oh, that's not butt tickles, is it? That's belly tickles. Good girl, dude. Lila, get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Good girl. Good girl, Lila. Oh, dude, are you too old now? That's enough foreplay. <sighs> I meant like play before we do this. Whoops, it's a bit of a spit. Okay. Should we do numbing cream? Yeah, let's do numbing cream. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop this and start the recording again. All right, I'm currently explaining to the automation guys one of them just stopped responding, so I'm talking to some new guys, but I think the easiest way to explain exactly what I want is to draw it. So, um, I'm just thinking about how to draw this out. So you would have, um, let's just say, oh God, get out of here, bro. All right, you have um, drive. Oh, right, one, 
O right. Two O right. Three. And of course now the dog wants in. Go on, in. Good girl. So you have folder one, two, three. This is then going to go to um, account is O right one. Wait. Um, tick, talk, YouTube, Instagram, right? And the same again. TikTok, Y T I G, and then same again. Hold on, Duda. Um, that's not right, is it? Flipping battery. So this is actually the so the Google Drive social account. Social account go to TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. Do you need to go out, dude? I've spent. Oh my gosh, let's go, dude. I am queefing out. <laughs> so I do like three videos. And then from there, they need to get deleted, right? So the Google Drive folder, oh my gosh. Google Drive folder is called O-Write. And in it are three videos. What if that's it? Three videos. Three, three videos. This is where I wish I was working on an electronic whiteboard. I could just command X and delete all of the things that I'd just written. So three videos. They each go to TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. And then, Jiminy Christmas. This is so hard for me to explain. I mean, it's not to explain, but to draw. And then, delete from the Google Drive, right? I'm, I don't know how to keep going with this. So I'm just going to try and explain it in message and then, and then explain it here. <laughs> All right, I just started watching this video about how Mr. B solved YouTube. So far, it's been pretty interesting. So I thought let's rewind it and we'll watch it together, whether you're doing YouTube or not. Mr. Beast has solved YouTube retention, hitting the golden benchmark of 70% retention with every video he makes. 70%, that's what you need. But how does Mr. Beast reach this magic? That links in with the TikTok retention. 
to find out. I spent a week closely studying as many Mr. Beast interviews, videos, and tweets as I could find, and I started to realize something. Buried across his content, Mr. Beast has revealed the exact framework he applies to each of his videos to get their retention so high, and it starts with the first five seconds of the video. Bro, I roast the hell out of people who like have boring first five seconds. Here's how Mr. Beast approaches this crucial time frame. Essentially, your title and thumbnail set expectations, and at the very beginning of the video, to minimize drop off, you want to assure them that those expectations are being met. Mr. Beast is very clear that in the first five seconds of the video, you need to meet the expectations of your viewer, and to do that, he applies a two-step formula to the very beginning of every one of his videos. First, his first sentence matches his title. And second, his first shot matches his thumbnail. Let's take a look at an example. Check out the title and thumbnail for this video. In the thumbnail, there's a close up of Mr. Beast with a view of an icy Antarctica behind him. The primary colors used are red, white, and blue. The title of the video is I Survived 50 Hours in Antarctica. Now let's take a look at the first five seconds of the video. We just landed in Antarctica. We're gonna survive the next 50 hours here. Did you catch it? The very first shot closely resembles the thumbnail. There are snowy mountains, a blue sky, a close up of Mr. Beast, and the primary colors are red, white, and blue. In Mr. Beast's first sentence, we just landed in Antarctica. We're gonna survive the next 50 hours here. Very closely matches his title. Let's take a look at another example. This video is titled That's like Something you'd so easily miss, and once you know it, it makes so much sense. 1 through 100 fight for $500,000. The thumbnail depicts a close up of Mr. Beast in front of 100 people in red jumpsuits. The main colors used here are red, white, and black. Now let's take a look at the first five seconds. Behind me are 100 people, and they range from the age one all the way through age 100. The first shot matches the concept of the thumbnail. I mean, honestly, horrible green screening <laughs> for that shot, but yeah. Mr. Beast so close good. up with a mass of people in red jumpsuits behind him. The next shot further illustrates the point, with all 100 people lined up in order of age. And the first sentence, Behind me are 100 people, and they range from the age 1 all the way through age 100. Matches the first part of the title. By using the first five... It's so interesting, actually, that he makes his YouTube videos as if he's making a TikTok. Like, in a TikTok, the first three to five seconds are essentially you explaining what the title of the video would be if it was a YouTube video. And he's just doing that in a long form video. Seconds to immediately match the title and thumbnail, Mr. Beast minimizes drop off from the very get go. And if you're wondering about the second part of that title, don't worry, we'll get to that next. Because after applying his two step formula to the first five seconds of this video, Mr. Beast moves on to the first 20 seconds. And this is where it gets interesting. Because to keep their attention up throughout the entire hook, the first 20 seconds of each of Mr. Beast's videos contain the same three core elements. He provides context, he introduces the stakes or payoff, and he creates a curiosity gap. Let's hop back to the ages one through one video to see each of these elements in action. We last left off this video after he showed 100 people. See if you can follow along. And I've trapped each of them in their very own glass cube. The last one to leave their cube is going to win half a million dollars. The challenge has officially begun. Let's see which age is the best. In the first... I always find it interesting seeing the breakdown of this. Someone has taken all the time to break this down. I, I would say like Mr. Beast is a savant at what he does. Second, Mr. Beast has provided context about the video setup, has introduced a juicy payoff, which, by the way, finishes meeting the expectation. Oh, the payoff here is winning the money. The title and thumbnail, and creates a curiosity gap that entices viewers to stick around and wait to the end to figure out which age wins. He does all of that in less than 20 seconds. But it doesn't stop there, because in addition to those three core elements, there's actually one more secret element that Mr. Beast applies to every one of his hooks. He alludes to it here. So at the very beginning, match the expectations, and then you want to exceed them. So you want to assure people that what they clicked on is what they're getting, and then blow their mind and be like, what? You're also getting even more. It's not enough to simply match the expectations set by the time. This is something I think I need to do more of in my videos. I don't know how though, so this is good for me. Thumbnail. To get that retention through the roof, Mr. Beast exceeds those expectations. How does he do that? It's simple. He puts in effort. A lot of people, though, they underestimate effort in videos. Viewers aren't stupid. They can tell when you, you know, half ASS, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse, a video, or if you, like, really put in effort. And, like, if they can tell you're putting in a lot of effort. When Mr. Beast talks about effort, what he's really doing is leveraging something called input bias, which is the idea that. I'm sorry, I've been watching this on. I watch most of my videos on one and a half times speed, so my apologies. <laughs> The more input we put into something, whether that be time or energy or cost, the more we'll value it. As an example of input bias, if we pay $50 for a bottle of wine, we'll value that more than if we had paid $20 for the same bottle of wine. And leveraging this bias is the special sauce that makes Mr. Beast's hooks so retentive. If we revisit the first 20 seconds of the Ages 1 through 100 video, we can see input bias being leveraged starting here. This shot is masterful. In one glance, you instantly get the sense that an immense amount of time, effort, and money has gone into the making of this video. The next few seconds heightens this effect, showing the full magnitude of all the effort that went into the video. This is how Mr. Beast not only meets the expectation that 100 people will fight for 500k, but that expectation. That is mad, isn't it? All those cubes set up, and you kind of. When I saw that to begin with, I thought, "Holy hell! There's no way all of that is set up." Like, I wonder what that feels like to walk through. And now, in my mind, subconsciously, I kind of want to wait for the shot where I get to walk through and see what it looks like. Showing how much work was put into this idea. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. How can you leverage input bias when you don't have a Mr. Beast budget? Well, you don't need a huge warehouse or a flashy set to trigger input bias. I think this actually, I'm sorry if I keep stopping it. If this is annoying, tell me in the comments, but adding a thought. This is like one of those instances where, like, 
the other day I was looking for what kind of can I should use to shotgun in the shower to like, show that I'm thinking or trying to practice how to shotgun. I could just go for a normal beer, but I wanted to go for something slightly different. Like to me, there I had three ideas: beer, the Mountain Dew, the tiny Mountain Dew can that we did do, and then the great one is like I don't know, having a a Heineken canister, you know, like the big mini kegs you have. Shoot, that's a much better idea. Like that would have had people commenting. Because like, I thought about doing like a, a can of chicken noodle soup or something weird like that, but I didn't think that people would see it enough in the video. Like, it was too quick. But a big, oh man, that wasted opportunity did it in the beginning of this video. Did you catch it? To find out, I spent a week closely studying as many Mr. Beast interviews, videos, and tweets as I could find. At the beginning of this video, I specifically mentioned how much time I spent researching for this video. My editing shows a high degree of effort as well. As a result, you as a viewer hopefully started to value my video more because you could tell- I would argue that telling the viewer you spent a lot of time on it is not the way to do it. I think you should just let the user, the viewer try and figure that out. Being told, I think it's the, has the opposite effect how much work I put into it. The other elements of Mr. Beast's hooks aren't exclusive to Mr. Beast's style videos either. See if you can spot them in the hook to this video. Mr. Beast has solved YouTube retention, hitting the golden benchmark of 70% retention with every video he makes. 70%, that's what you need. But how does Mr. Beast reach this magic number? To find out, I spent a week closely studying as many Mr. Beast interviews, videos, and tweets as I could find, and I started to realize something. Buried across his content, Mr. Beast has revealed the exact framework he applies to each of his videos to get their retention so high, and it starts with the first five seconds of the video. Now, my hook is nowhere near perfect, and it makes one big mistake that Mr. Beast is always careful to avoid. Each of his intros is always no longer Longer than 20 seconds long. Mr. Beast knows that the largest drop off happens during the hook, so he jumps into the action as soon as possible. In his Ages 1 through 100 video, he says, The challenge has officially begun. Let's see which age is the best. At the 12 second mark. In his. This then kind of goes against what I just said, which is telling people the challenge has officially begun. You could just like go in to see people in the box and then the, the viewer knows the challenge has begun. But I guess maybe. Maybe calling it out is needed? I don't know, I'm not sure where I am. So comparing the $1 yacht to the $1 billion On yacht, the experience of the $1 yacht starts at the 18 second mark. For Mr. Beast, jumping to the action usually means starting the first challenge or experience. For a video like mine, it could mean jumping into the first point. Regardless, Mr. Beast starts the body of his video no later than 20 seconds in, because he knows that the sooner the retention curve starts to level off, the better. The question then becomes, how do you keep the retention curve level? What is Mr. Beast's secret to retention curves that look like this, versus the steadily declining line that so many of us are familiar with? As it turns out, it's not one secret, it's three, and it starts with visual variety. When it comes to visuals, Mr. Beast is quite clear where he's Stands. If I just talk to a camera for 10 seconds without a cut, like a lot of people will just like get bored or they'll lose interest. To avoid this, Mr. Beast maintains visual variety with a cut at least every three to five seconds to break things up. One of the best examples of this is in his Antarctica survival video. Take a look at the timing of his cuts during this clip. Oh my God. Oh, don't slip. Oh, this is wild. I'm so terrified. There's a drop to my right. If I fall backwards, I roll for 2,000 feet. Ugh. Try Popeye's new spice. Now the reason that I am, that's my phone, that I am finding this so interesting isn't for YouTube, but is for TikTok. I'm trying to bring across some hacks. Like I think one of mine is I changed the clip every one to two seconds in a TikTok video. I feel like that works quite well. And that, to me, adding something like the, the stabilization effect where it tracks your face, I think keeps retention pretty well as well. The process of hiking the mountain could have easily become quite boring, but by using eight different shots within 20 seconds of footage, Mr. Beast is able to hold your attention throughout the entire process of climbing a mountain. And you don't need expensive drones or multiple cameramen to pull this off. If you do talking head videos, could you put another camera at an angle, then switch between the two to add variety. Alternatively, if you're like me and are too broke to afford two cameras, you can incorporate different levels of scale, zooming in and out in between clips to keep things visually dynamic. But even the most frequent changes in camera angles still can't make walking in a steep line interesting forever. Attention spans are shorter than they've ever been, a fact that Mr. Beast is quite aware of. It's very hard with a single storyline, if you're doing like a double digit minute video, to just have that one thing grip their entire attention throughout the whole video and pay off at the end. And that's where secret number two comes in, consistent contrast. Instead of an entire 12 minute video featuring an Antarctic trek, Mr. Beast breaks things up using contrast. From the moment Mr. Beast sets off on his hike, a side story- that, I, I would call these loops, not that I'm right and he's wrong. Uh, you have multiple open loops, so you you start something which builds someone's curiosity and while you're figuring that out you open up another loop 
And then while you're figuring that out, you can maybe come back and close this loop. But on this other storyline, you're opening up another loop. So you're just continuously opening up these loops and never closing all of them at the same time so that the viewer doesn't get a chance to think, OK, I've gotten what I came for. Now I can go. Introduced. Now, Operation Hold. Come on. For the duration of the hike, to break up stretches in Mr. Beast's mountain journey, the viewer is periodically taken back to base camp to see the boys digging a hole. The contrast between the intensity of a frigid climb and the tomfoolery of the base camp shenanigans prevents the snowy footage from ever getting stale. And before you This is also a, a good trick to compare. So as one team is really struggling to climb a mountain, the other team is kind of just chilling in a tent. And it makes one of them seem way harder and the other one seem way easier thinking, but side stories don't work for my particular style of video. There are other ways to incorporate contrast. For a talking head video like this one, I try to do this by blending footage of me talking with clips from Mr. Beast's videos or interviews. Hopefully that contrast prevents you from getting too bored of my talking head. Now, is it working? <laughs> I hope so. In wild visual variety and consistent contrast are integral components of Mr. Beast's videos. The final secret to the body of his videos is the most retentive of them all. The final secret is good pacing. This is a concept often stated broadly, but rarely seen in detail. So let's get real specific. Most videos look like this. At the beginning of the video, there's high energy from your hook. At the end of the video, there's high energy from your payoff, but this middle bit is low energy in comparison, steadily declining in energy until the boost from the payoff at the end. In comparison, Mr. Beast's videos look like this, with frequent cycles of high and low energy. What do I mean by high and low energy? It depends on the video. In Mr. Beast's $1 versus $1 billion yacht video, each cycle is the experience of a new tier of yacht. The cycle starts with a high energy, exciting introduction of a new yacht, followed by the lower energy of the act of exploring the yacht, followed by a new cycle with a new exciting yacht. This is very interesting and it adds into, I think, building the character because no person can be high energy the whole time and I think if you set that high energy the whole time, that becomes the norm, right? And then just people drop off from there. Whereas if you have these periods of ramping up to high energy, people get interested and then the energy drops down and people are like, okay, well, th okay, this is becoming the new normal. Oh shit, we're going back up again. This keeps the pacing up throughout the entire duration of the video, right up until the final high energy payoff of the billion dollar yacht at the end. Each of Mr. Beast's cycles tends to be between two to four minutes long from start to finish, with the shorter cycles towards the front of the video and the longer cycles towards the back of the video. The slower, more emotional parts of Mr. Beast's videos are reserved for the last 20% of his videos, with the beginning allocated for lighter content. And of course, the concept of energy cycling for good pacing is not unique to Mr. Beast's style videos. For this video, each new retention tactic I mentioned starts a new cycle, with the cycle starting with the high energy introduction of a new tactic, followed by the lower energy of explaining and giving examples, followed by a new cycle with a new tactic. The use of energy cycling keeps Mr. Beast's retention as flat as possible until the very end of his video. And when it comes to those final seconds, well, they're more important than most people give them credit for. Most people tend to see long drop-offs at the end of their videos, which hurts their overall retention. But Mr. Beast keeps his retention up right until his final ad read. To do this, he applies a two-part equation. First, he reveals a big payoff, and second, he makes sure to end the videos on a high note, whether that be dramatic, wholesome, or funny. To see this in action, check out the end of the Ages 1 through 100 video. I don't think it's in there. I think I'm gonna pick my case. You're gonna keep this. Locked in? All right, Joe, what is inside your briefcase? Dude, I can't believe he opened his case and won a camera. That's so mad. You told her it was in there. You, this man literally said he had it. Oh my god, what a crazy play. What is wrong with you? <laughs> he told the truth and he got it. We said all along, big guy can win. So it pays off to be honest. Even though you didn't win, we still want to give you ten thousand dollars and your family a trip to Disney. Mr. Beast ends with an app. Yeah, I guess what happened because he's contractually obligated to do so, but regardless, you're still left with the high of the big half a million dollar payoff and the wholesomeness of the loser still being gifted $10,000 and a trip to Disneyland. Of course, you don't need to shell out thousands of dollars in each of your videos, but to ensure your viewers leave your videos wanting to come back for more, end on a high note. You'd be the end, right? But no, despite being so intentional about every component of the video, in the first five seconds, the first 20, to the body, until the very end, Mr. Beast still has one final secret he applies to hit that 70% retention. After the entire video is made, from start to finish, Mr. Beast will go back and cut out every dull moment. How does he identify these dull moments? Simple. He'll have 10 friends roast his videos, and he'll watch people watch his videos. He trusts his friends to not hold back when shelling out criticism. And when watching people watch his videos, he looks specifically for when they get old. That's what Kenny and I used to do to each other. We stopped doing it as much now, but... That was a really good video. Let's give you a, a like. Stop recording. Now, I think the one thing that I'm really taking from that is um, how do I have the periods of high and low intensity and multiple loops in a 60 to 75 second video? It's a good question, Oliver. I don't know yet, but it's food for thought. We also, I found another dude 
who is able to do the automation, which is going to pick up files from the Google Drive folder, post them at specific times of the day, and then delete them from the folder so that the folder's reset for the editor to upload videos again. Um, he's doing it for $125 and using it, uh, making the automation on Make, uh, which has its own like automation platform too. The benefit of that is that I don't have to pay $20 a month on Zapier. And that's half the price of the other quote I got. So it's worth looking around. Which I guess that's going to be ready in, he said three to six days. That's going to be ready in three to six. It's probably going to take me that long to get to make all the clips from the previous videos. Oh, I have, I have a new plan on doing this, by the way. Um, so I get all my clips, right? And I'm going to have the editor edit all of those clips. But I'm also going to have some of my, edit like a few of my own clips, post them to my second account, which is Odd Daisy Shop, post them on there, and then I can have, I can use my main profile on TikTok to repost or add those to my story to help drive my viewers, not just the YouTube video, but to my second account, which is going to be where I post more clips. Yeah, I think I'm looking forward to it. I think, I think we're in a good place. I think we're going the right direction. It is one o'clock. Jeez, time flies by. Do I have, I should probably at least start on this numbing video, shouldn't I, so I can film it tomorrow morning? Yeah, let's plan that out. I saw this video from this guy, Phil.ai. He has, he basically just talks about all the newest AI programs or features that he finds. And this one is for storytelling, for story writing. So plot dot, Plot dot dot AI is what it's called. Um, I, I, have, I looked at it once and then I dropped off. So let's, let's try it for free. Sign in with Google, show me. Okay. Oh, we're in, okay. Screenplays. Buttons missing. Ready to drive dive back into your screenplay. I start writing in English. Okay. Um, no idea is too small or big for plot dot. So I see a different types of story here's story styles here see i would say i'm still at a very early like basic stage of my storytelling let's say the genre is entertainment no the genre is oh my gosh what type of um it's not really action, is it? But we're going to try action. The theme is, um, I don't know, audience is 18 to 35. Theme, love story is a theme. Experimentation. Let's see what ideas come up. It'll be interesting to know the prompt that's going into I assume it's just an API with chat GPT. I feel like this is something that I should create over time. Honestly, I should just be spending the time creating this right now, shouldn't I? Like, I think we're still super early in storytelling on social media, that this would be a good idea for me to have. Suggested ideas. It's 
read through. Uh, what is log line? I don't know what that means. Okay, let's, I guess, just read these, see what it means. So just ideas. In a dystopian future, a young... What does dystopian mean? Futuristic future? A young woman discovers she possesses natural powers and joins a group of rebels trying to overthrow an oppressive regime that's using advanced technology to control society. Next one, singularity. When a physics experiment goes wrong, a scientist is transported to a parallel universe where humans and highly advanced AI exist in a precarious balance on the brink of war. I guess let's just click on that and see what oh okay I guess I should have seen that one coming the title okay so this section is to brainstorm the idea or the type of idea yeah title of the post and then the log line is what's expected to happen in the story Okay, so what I'm picking up on here is the fact that actually there's not, yeah, we don't see the result. It's just kind of setting the scene as to what happens. So if I do, how do I explain this? For the needle mat video, which is where I would put on numbing cream. Greasy, ain't you? There you go, pet. All right. A, a dad wants to try relaxing after being stressed and decides to use an acupressure mat to reach a state of relaxation that gives him the ability to hallucinate. However, he wants to make this more of a challenge and uses numbing cream to numb his skin where he lies on the acupressure mat. Match. Which should decrease the um, endorphins released in his body which should re decrease the endorphins released in his body that are normally released from the acupressure points in his back Oh, these aren't different types of stories. These are progressions through this, isn't it? Okay. No idea is too small or big for plot dot. Each story needs a soul. Define yours with a riveting premise that includes a killer core plot, an exceptional setting, a grip instructor, and a genre that keeps the audience hooked. Let's have AI do it. <laughs> Story takes place at home in the father's office. What is the overall structure of your screenplay? I don't know what that means, really. What is the central message of your theme or screenplay? That people can overcome, can overcome distractions and control their mind. 
the tone is first person narrating the story. What style or approach are you taking with your screenplay? I don't know what that means. What rating would you give your, I don't, uh, let's say PG-ish. If a, what genre does your I don't entertainment oh gosh Oh, that doesn't copy back in, does it? Oh, it's a th oh, the structure is three act. Yes. Suburban home. Yeah, that works. Psychological thriller genre. No, I kind of want it. I want to move out of things being super dramatic. I want to go more into the comedy side of things. I just, honestly, I don't know yet. Um, the theme, what have I put in here? Okay. Voice, first person, style, surreal, and R. Uh, realism? I don't know. you just see what comes out I don't want it it's not about escaping reality to relax control the mind to overcome challenges what are the conflicts yes Um, the next one, the next conflict is that numbing cream disrupts release of endorphins required for relaxation. Why aren't we submitting? Now we're good to go. I would like to have just auto populated all of that. I don't know if you need all of this information. Thirty two mail. Content creator. Let's put unemployed and see what happens. Oh my gosh. This is... This is really deep. I've still got one, two, three... One, two, three, four... I've got five of these to go through still. I would say I wouldn't use this. I would stop at this point. But I was thinking you might want to see this go all the way through. I kind of, I do kind of want to see the result. But that's a lot of work. And maybe this is good for helping me understand. Okay. Um Let's just, let's just do this, shall we? Let's do it. Okay. Backstory. Provide a brief backstory for your protagonist. What experiences have shaped them into the person they are today? Uh, um, oh my gosh, how far back do we go? 
what do I you're asking me to go flipping deep into who I am let's say wants a challenge and interested in taking on tasks that spark an interest. What else, dude? Um... Struggles with mind always running, with mind always running, and mixed with a hectic lifestyle, he wants to find a way to think clearly. What are my personality traits? Um, handsome, funny, um, really, really cool. That's just not funny, is it? Likes to make jokes uh, likes to make inappropriate jokes inappropriate jokes under inappropriate circumstances <laughs> that word has come like as I'm saying it I'm telling myself don't say that don't say that um Likes to make inappropriate jokes under inappropriate circumstances, but is also serious about progressing. It's also serious about improving who they are as a person throughout life and their experiences could say something about doing that for the wife and kid but I don't think so appearance oh gosh. 511 brown hair stylish sorry incredibly stylish beard athletic character how does your protagonist grow and change throughout the story what is their character arc I th I'm doing all of this there's no AI part of this like I'm basically just going through the whole process that I think about when I make something on here but instead I'm just telling this all of that so it can make a story Right? I need to keep going. Let's just see what it comes out with. Character. I guess we won't be filming this today. I think we're, we've are we accepted that. Um, goes from wanting a challenge and trying to avoid distract and unsure of whether or not he can avoid distractions to overcoming distractions to overcoming distractions and Becoming a mentally stronger person. Oh gosh. 
I thought I would like I, I know like I'd like the option to just populate potential goals based on the rest of the story and like what other conflicts could come up what I'm doing here is Okay, I'm actually going to stop here because what I'm doing is providing all of the information that I would be thinking through to make the story. And instead, I'm putting all of that into here for it to make a like a, a screenplay type script. Yeah, like this is too far too much for what I'm looking for. So let's stop. Um. So maybe there is space in the market for me to uh, make a shorter one for a YouTube, for TikTok and whatnot. Okay, let's stop. Jimmy Earnhardt, nickname, Jim Bob, age, he's, uh, he's, let's just say 32. He's male, he's a goat. Now let's use a real one. He's a, he's unemployed. Backstory. Just shape the hero here. Can you click to use this? No. Okay, backstory. Personality. Well, give me a quick review of this. I would say there needs to be more descriptors, a description as to what needs to be put into each of these fields. Appearance, character arc. I'm going to skip these bits, by the way. We've then made up the next character, which is the uh, conflicting counterparts, so who the main character me would be up against. Not useful in this case, but um, like mo all of my videos are going to have a single person, just me, obviously. And then, no ideas, I guess. I now have to cast some friends and foes. Like I feel like there should be checkboxes at the beginning of this app to help you figure out, are you doing this as just a single person or multiple? So be right back. Yeah, like all of this, let's get, I have, AI should fill that out. I think if you could create a template each time and make the small adjustments based on the story that you're doing, then I think this would be, well, we'll see what the result looks like, but it looks very detailed. And this would give you the, you know, the base storyline, but there would be so much more to make this into a good video. Oh, bloody hell. All right, what's this for storyline setup? The, the, this is for the plot. Uh, what have we got in here? Foreshadowing, excuse me. Woman imposes herself on neighbors. I don't know who that is. Storyline. Is the storyline set in third person? I'm not sure. Our rating is G. So, G, theme. What is the theme here? Setting healthy boundaries. I'm gonna go with third person. I'm not really sure why it's that. So I'm about to understand. Realism is the style. Um, can we? Do we have all of this? 
Woman ruins man's relaxation time with intrusive barrage of, advo- of advice. See, like, that is is helpful stuff. Like, that's an idea of what I could do to, um, when we talk about the climactic choice, like the crisis point where I have to make a decision of someone comes in and interrupts this. Do I try again? Do I ignore them at the door? Or... So they barge in through the window and I can't, like, I just, I just die. See, that was a good banana. You didn't see that option coming, did you? I didn't either. So let's put that in. Are there any subplots or anything? So exposition, I'm not really sure what that means. Climax, which is what? we call the crisis point. We being what I call the crisis point. Resolution seems kind of weak. Subplots, conflict and structure. Why are these all out of order? I'm asking for a lot and I've been a bit demanding. You need the subplots. This so subplots here is where um, you kind of have that contrast that we were talking about in Mr. Beast video, where you have different story storylines going on at the same time. What are your thoughts on TikTok Shop, by the way? I I feel like TikTok Shop is getting to a place where it's just a load of crap. It's not always a load of crap. But it's just weird deals that hit your For You page. People trying to sell you things. And from comments, it looks like it's getting to a place of people not liking. If they see TikTok shop, they think it's like some kind of crappy video and they scroll. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, so that's all filled out. Let's, what are we doing now? We're building the actual story. I don't really want to dive deeper. Bloody hell. I don't... I don't see anything in here that uh, really changes my mind about how I would write my things. Like what are these things? Settings? I don't, I don't really, so what would I do? Jimmy, what's up, pal? What are you up to? I guess you would kind of just read through this to get an idea of your script. Then what happens in act one, two, and three? I mean, if you're writing a book or something, yeah, it's it's pretty good. But I think, and I, I don't say this lightly, where I'm at with storytelling and my understanding, I don't need AI. And, and I think, I sound like a dickhead. I sound like an absolute pleb. But I think where my mind is at in terms of being in a creative space, I think I could do all of this. 
without having to input all that information. Well, um, I was, we don't have much time to do the needle mat video right now because I got a little bit distracted. I, um, the hard drive thing, I got set up properly. So this is what I'm talking about. This thing here, come on. All right, get it open there. All right, so you see the flashing lights. We've got two drives in there, pretty sizable drives. And the problem we had was that when I set it up or turned it on, whatever, it showed up as two individual drives on here, which means I'd have to like select where it goes to. But that wasn't right, so I had to set up, I had to do the RAID. I had to set up RAID. Yeah, so I did all the RAID. And now it's good, so I'm copying everything over. And then I also started cutting out the clips and getting them sent to the right folders for my for the editing team to start working on them. And now, I thought I'd show you something that's very interesting to me. The Bed of Needles, the episode one of the second season where I explained like what happens, the process, it didn't do very well to begin with. And I thought that it was interesting that people didn't really care how it worked. Well, I posted that six days ago and it's now at 1.5 million. So it's doing all right. And then for the, I did see that the Red Bull video at 1.2, 1.3 million. Um, I got into that really quickly, but I've noticed that a lot of people are essentially just saying that what I'm, this mat thing doesn't hurt. And it's not like, it's not a pain that's gonna kill you, but it is, it's not, it's far from comfortable. So I thought, if we're going to use the numbing cream, we should play into that. And I mentioned earlier, we'd, I'd like to start going on more on the comedic side. And, and I'm not sure what that means. So, um, we set up that, um, so we want to do the numbing. Well, no, we want to do the needle mat. Uh, so I want to not feel the pain. Put on numbing cream. I think the the floor de here should definitely be um, insecure about what people think. Like so, insecurity. And the catch to putting on numbing cream is that uh, the main catch is going to be that I'm not going to, that I think I'm not going to be able to feel the needles. Oh, wait. Don't feel needles. And oh, wait. Mm. Let me just write this down. The catch is that I don't feel needles. Therefore, it's not going to work. I should probably, I think this is something I might have missed uh, because of, excuse me, blood and endorphins. Like, so what now I'm, I don't think this is good for the video, but what I'm interested in is the release of the endorphins that triggers that deep relaxation. This is my understanding. I'm pretty sure you don't need to feel the pain. I, I feel like your body will just like, your body go through, through, your body goes through the same motions, right? And it's just that our mind doesn't feel it. How the hell does numbing cream work? I guess I'm down that. Oh, this is good. So the numbing cream I've bought, the label on it is Quip Electric Toothbrush, Blue Electronic, the new edition. That's good, wow. Brush my teeth with that.
But then what would the crisis be? If I don't think I'm going to get into it here, what could go... I would argue... I'm kind of thinking that actually using the numbing cream is going to get me into it way faster. So then the crisis is actually that I forgot to set the timer. Yes, forgot to set timer. That's not even a word. Set timer. Um, and I have some kind of appointment. So then, I think this at this point, the viewer's then left wondering, well, how does he wake up to get to the appointment? So there's uh, wake up naturally. What if this appointment here is to do with something that loops back into the insecurity of caring what people think? So like this is some kind of appointment or meeting about doing well, getting praised for something or I'm thinking of using the exit interview that I have this coming. Oh no, that was Friday <laughs> that I didn't have. <laughs> but maybe I could still use that as an example since that is something that happened in my life. Then I kind of have to exp But it's not a big thing to explain quitting my job, is it? All right, so I want to not feel the pain because of comments. So that's like showing that I care what people think. So I find and use numbing cream, but the catch to using numbing cream is that I don't feel the needles. And as I'm lying there, I feel like it's not gonna work because of the blood rushing and the endorphins. Yes. Then we get to crisis mode where I've been on here for ages and I have an appointment that I need to get to. So I don't know if I'll be able to. So my options are to wake up naturally, uh, miss appointment, or I need to think of something weird but believable that would happen. I could use the ring doorbell and act like something has happened at the front door, couldn't I? I hear a tree has fallen. Yes, I think that's a good idea actually. I hear a tree has fallen because I've got some footage of a, a neighbor, the tree fell on their house fairly recently. <coughs> Which means I'll need to touch in somewhere around here about a, uh, that it's windy, storm. I'm gonna loop that in somewhere into either to here or into here. The banana is, I hear a tree crash or woken up by. And then the finale, oh wait, but that doesn't lead back into the not caring what people think, does it?
time is it? 3.56. I normally stop at 4. Hear the tree crash, woken up by... Woken up by the tree crashing. See, I'm thinking I could use like something that happens over by the tree to show that I no longer care what people think. But that doesn't feed back in. That's not the experience that has changed me. That's just something random that has changed me. Um, so I'm woken up by the tree crash. Maybe insecurity isn't the right flaw for this. Um, we could do the age old not believing in process, not trusting process. Process, process, trust process. The finale is that I offer the mat to the guy. Offer Shakti, I think it's called, to house owner so that they can relax. Okay. I quite like that. All right, let's um, script that out and film that tomorrow morning. Uh, we've got some good stuff checked off. I'm getting clips uploaded to be edited, mid, like midway through that. Um, we've switched up the intro to these videos and the automation process is on its way and the hard drive is set up. I'll tell you what, whether we have anyone watching this or not, this is so good for me. It's keeping me way more accountable to what I'm doing. So, all right, that's good. Great. I am going to, um, Leave this to keep copying and see you tomorrow. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm just 32 year old dabbing.